Hello everyone, this is Adibus here. Welcome to my tutorial guys featuring Skullgirls. Today, I'll be featuring Cerebella, the grappler of the game. Please note that these tutorial guides aren't meant for combos, but they're meant for mastering the neutral game and metagame with these characters. Also, note that I'll be going over every character for Skullgirls, probably one per week, although things tend to come up. And again, I had planned to do this sooner and with a better camera, so I apologize for the quality, but again, things come up. Well, without further ado, let me introduce to you Cerebella. Cerebella, as I stated before, is a grappler, meaning that she has different kinds of grabs for different situations. Close range. Bit of mid range, I suppose. <laughs> she has an overhead one. Anti air. Let's see a better example. That's better. She even has a grab bag. And of course, regular old air throw and ground throw. Oh, and let's not forget the super. Yeah. Look at that damage. In most fighting games, the grappler is usually the character that does quite a bit of damage, as well as the with all the benefits of having different kinds of grabs. And armor. Just a moment. But I'll get to that. Right now I want to start with neutral game. Neutral game is basically using your character's abilities in order to open up your opponent. You do this while you're in the neutral state, which is basically when your character is stationary. In this position that I'm in right now, Cerebella can do any of her moves at this point in time. She can jump, she can crouch, light attacks, medium, and heavies, and of course her special moves, and her blockbusters. And the kitty. <laughs> right. In order to master the neutral game, you have to understand about priority attacks. Attacks with high priority beat out attacks with lower priority. In this case, lo lowest priority attacks I can think of being regular hitting attacks. <laughs> Luckily, Cerebella is one of the select few characters who has quite a bit of range on their attacks. Her crouching light kick is pretty far for a, a light attack. And of course the more obvious Titan Knuckle. As well as her jumping light kick has quite a bit of range. Her jumping medium punch has a bit more range. And her heavy punch has a lot more range. Although less quick although not as quick as the medium punch and with almost the exact amount of, um, amount of range on it too. Excuse me. Well, for Cerebella, these are really good attacks, but as I said before, they're very low priority. Because if you haven't noticed, with these attacks, they extend Cerebella's hitboxes, being where she can where she's vulnerable at, where she can be hit. An attack with higher priority than these, which is a lot of attacks, can easily stop Cerebella's punches and light kicks, of course. Note Parasol, for example. Notice how she uses her umbrella, and yet there's no hitboxes on it at all. Meaning, Parasol's range allows her to beat out a lot of Cerebella's attacks without being vulnerable, because her umbrella has higher priority, because it has no hitboxes on it whatsoever. 
me maining Parasol makes that make, makes me a very very happy person. I like to exploit that a lot, but this isn't about Parasol. Another thing that allows you to um, use priority, have higher priority, is armor. Cerebella has many armor moves being a grappler like character. She has her lock and load, light punch, and medium punch, and heavy punch, all with different types of armor. She has her tumbling run, and her battering ram, all of which I have armor. Having armor, these moves allow her whoops <laughs> allow her to plow through attacks such as that no she still takes damage she just ignores all hits done whatsoever but as rare as armor is please be careful as Lock and load may be pretty safe on block. However, you have to be able to anticipate what your opponent is going to do next. Such as do a block, do a block low in order to block their low attacks, tech, or jump to avoid their grab, or in Parasol's case, block high for the overhead. A step up from armor would be invulnerability attacks, which usually include attacks that have invulnerable startup. Note they're depicted by the white hitboxes on the character. These moves are completely invulnerable, as in nothing your opponent does hit attack hits you unless the invulnerability wears off. So moves like DPs and supers which have invulnerable startup allow you to catch your opponent off guard using the vulnerability to get through their attacks similar to armor only you don't take any damage also the fact that they're and well at least in Cerebello's case they're may, way more risky another thing that beats that has high priority is projectiles. Like Parasol's Umbrella, Creed, projectiles do not extend the opponent's hit, the um, character's hitboxes. Making it so they can attack you from a full screen away while staying relatively safe. But don't fret, Parasol Parasol is not the only one with projectiles. This, of course, there's Peacock, but there's also Cerebella with her counter projectile. A little hard to time. I mean, even I'm not the best at it, but it's effective. Which it causes a stagger state on your opponent if it connects, allowing the cerebellum ample time to get in. Now the thing to note is that since Cerebella is a grappler and she has all these kinds of grabs, which do tons of damage, you want to be able to get in close on your opponent. I mean considering the fact you can't really zone at all. So how do you get in? Simple. Cerebella has far-reaching normal attacks and command normals as well. That allow her to catch your opponent off guard. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I didn't expect to block from that far away. It's pretty, pretty damn good. I say so myself. Also, she's pretty mobile with a tumbling run which has a hit up armor that allows her to um, ignore one attack. You can do battering round to, ex to add on two more hits of armor, but please note that this move is very, very unsafe on block. So please be careful. Another way for her to get in is using 
Her glide attack, which is holding the high punch button when you're in the air. This allows her to glide over most attacks, but also note that this is also very unsafe. When she's gliding, she cannot block, and the glide doesn't stop unless she cancels it by letting go of the high punch, by doing her shoulder drop, or doing her grab back. The grab back being, of course, the most unsafe, so I pretty much wouldn't recommend it. Also, note that Cerebella also has her, well, maybe not far reaching, but somewhat mid range grab that allows her to catch her opponent off guard still. From a really from relatively unexpected distance. At least in my opinion anyway. I hate this character. Well, I hate all grab characters. But enough of that. So her strong suit being her grabs. But note that you shouldn't always just throw them out there. I mean, this is a fighting game, and it has to be fair, right? There are ways to avoid her grabs. For example, her first two grabs, Diamond Drop and Merry Gorilla, don't hit opponents who jump. No matter how well you think you time it, there's no way for you to grab a character who is jumping. These grabs cannot be checked, but they can be jumped over like any other grab. They're a little difficult to punish if you jump over them, but please be wary that if your opponent starts jumping over your grabs, you may have to change your tactics. Now you also say that there is an anti-air grab, but... That was really weird. There we go. It can be blocked. Now you might also think about her grab bag. But like any other normal grub throw, it can be teched. Of course, Tekken makes it probably the safest throw she has, aside from her regular air throw, and her jumping is really aggravating, and her normal throw. Now, Cerebella does a lot of damage. What, she has pretty long combos that do relatively around. Oh, I forgot she was uh, blocking. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think I can do this with the camera. Yeah, I dropped it. All right. But my point is, things like that, as cool as they may be and as damaging they may be, I believe that combo right there does about half life on 1v1. Despite that, I would prefer going for Command Grab. That combo was about 4,000 with the added 2,000 from the command grab. And you can combo off of it using Diamond Dynamo. If you're in the corner, you can get way more off of it. That grab bag, it's very unsafe, but I love it. It does so much damage by itself. 
Cerebro is a very high damage character. On 1v1, I've managed to kill people with merely two resets. Normally including this, because I can get a high combo off of it. Well, not in that example. Yeah. Maybe I can't. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a liar. I can combo into it. Yeah, I'm such a liar. Oh well. Also to note, this is probably an advanced technique, so I kind of really want to go over it, but it's actually really useful in Cerebello's case. Dash jumping. When you dash, and then you jump. I'm not sure exactly how adept I am at it, but it covers a good because of a fair because of a fair amount of distance in the screen. Sorry, I'm such a yutz. <laughs> and it allows her to cross up via her light kick, which has very little hit stun. So I wouldn't recommend trying to combo off of it. Rather. Catch people off guard mo most of the time. Whenever someone gets hit, they always want to block. Grabs are so much cooler. The one thing I like about Cerebella. Now. I taught you how to get in close to your opponent. Being tumbling run, being her glide, dash jumping, tighten knuckles, some crouching low kicks, and other far reaching attacks. How far is this? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 